four, three, two, one. Hi, Cameron, and welcome to the Make Life Rich Movement podcast. Thank you so much for coming on. Hi, Sarah. I am so excited to chat with you today. You guys, you're in for a treat. We are literally speaking wick, wick, with the queen of hosting and in my opinion, one of the tastemakers of the event planning industry in the Hamptons, New York City, and Long Island. You are the founder of Forbes Functions, which I love is a completely women-owned and run event planning company. Love your work. Love the work you do with brands and regular folks. And then you just recently launched yesterday, Hours at Yours, which is a tablescape rental that's executed with the ease of clothing rentals, which I just cannot wait to get into. And I just feel like you... I've been in PR for 15 years. I've seen every type of event you could ever go to both professionally and personally. And I feel like you have really the um, style and personality that you bring to your work has really brought glamour and like pomp and circumstance back to experiences, I think in a way that's been missing for like the last 10 years. And you can totally feel the atmosphere that you create with your productions via just like your social account. So I'm just so excited to just hear your whole process and learn all about you today. So that's, that's my little spiel guys. We're in for a, such a treat and you're going to be obsessed with her Instagram after the episode too. <laughs> well, thank you so much for saying that. It's so sweet of you. It's, it's literally like so rare when you get to see someone that does something so differently, but does it so well that like people are immediately emulating what you've been doing. And I kind of love it even more because you are so young compared to a lot of the industry giants that are kind of noticing what you've been doing and kind of what you've been influencing. So I just want to make sure you get your flowers because it's important. And I know that this is still very early on in your career for you, but you're absolutely going to be climbing and continually uh, for at least the next few years because you just have just gotten started and it's just so impressive to see. So I would love to know what your earliest party memory is like where you were really like just aware of what a party was. I mean, honestly, I would say going back super, super young, I remember even some of my childhood birthdays, like probably like six, seven, eight and my family has just always put a really, just really quickly started to love hosting and entertaining. And by the time I was in middle school, I mean, I remember being like 12 and 13 and planning my own birthday parties and going to Staples and printing all the fun invites and everything. So really from a young age has been something I've been passionate about. I love that. I feel like there are kids that either love birthdays or hate birthdays or parties in general. And it's funny to see how that kind of keeps on going right through adulthood. It's like my husband hates parties. He always has. He had birthday parties as a child but hated them then and he hates them now. I had birthday parties as a child and I loved it and I love parties now. So it's so interesting to see that <laughs> there's definitely like two sides to the story. But do you remember like a moment where – you kind of realize like the sky was the limit with your, your birthday planning. I know you just recently had a birthday, so happy birthday. And that birthday party looks so fun, but I know it was not like your typical event that you put together. So if you could plan, like, I guess the perfect example of a birthday party that you could throw professionally, what would that look like for you? I'm so curious. Ooh, I mean, I think for me, if, I had, you know, the dream client who said, you know, take the credit card, go ahead. For me, there are so many spaces in New York City that I just still haven't been able to work with or haven't been right for a client. So I would say one is like the new Four Seasons in New York has an absolutely beautiful venue with a pool inside. Doing something there would be so fabulous. There are also kind of this whole new wave of social clubs popping up in the city so there's one that was just founded by um, Jean George, the restaurateur, doing something there I think would be so cool. I think for me, it's really about like the client's aesthetic and vision. So right now there's like uh, so many different themes I'm loving, but I really am kind of inspired by what's ever going on at the moment. So mm -hmm. I would say like in the winter when Saltburn was all the rage, I was super into that kind of aristocratic, maximalist, candelabras everywhere. And now as we kind of head into the summer, I feel like I'm really inspired by kind of the Italian Dolce Vita Capri with lots of blue and yellow and lemon um, 
accents. So for me, it's just always changing. And I would say my kind of biggest dream with clients in general is just being able to take their vision and what they have up in their head and turn it into a reality. And that to me is the most rewarding part about what I do. It's, it's so fun. I, I wonder if like, I would be able to give a pretty good idea of what I'd like to do for a party, but I'm sure there are a ton of people that don't really know what they want at all. How do you kind of help a client figure out what it is that they kind of could do or help them to get the ideas flowing in their head? Because it's, I'm surprised at how many people kind of have a hard time. You know, maybe it's like a thing of like, oh, I don't know if I deserve something that cool or like whatever. But do you run into that with your clients ever? And then how do you kind of help them get through that if you do? Yeah, I would say with, with us, we really do have kind of like two types of clients. The clients that will come to us you know, they know what they want. They have a vision in mind already. They'll maybe have a Pinterest board. And then we have clients who will come to us and say, you know, it's my 30th or it's my 40th or it's my wedding anniversary. And I'm not really sure how I should be celebrating that. And in those situations, I always like to get on a phone call with the client and, you know, talk through what are your key priorities, because that is so different for everyone. For some people, music will always be number one. And, you know, they want to devote the most budget to getting a really great band or a really great DJ. And for others, that could be totally different. It could be all about the food and wine and beverage. So I think for me, you know, really understanding what are the client's key priorities? What do they want to really emphasize? What is less important to them? And then from there, I normally am able to suggest kind of a plan of, okay, based on your budget, based on your guest count, here is what I would advise that will get you kind of the most bang for your buck or will get you kind of the highest impact for the lowest cost. Ugh, love it. And I love that you also have the variability of being able to take their budget into account, which is, guys, not something that anyone serving the New York or Hamptons area is going to give a shit about. So that's very special of you. And I think it just goes to show – your skill set and being able to work with an array of budget budgets can make or break an event. And for someone to have the ability to use, uh, you know, you know, not like a corporate level budget and still create what you create to me is where your magic lies. I really love that you can do both the maximalist, the high and the low without depreciating one from the other. Like you present a very like, forward moving emphasis on bringing customization in, I think, to your clients in a way that does make it feel very special, no matter what it is you're pulling off. And that's really difficult to do. Do you put any kind of specific effort into the production of your products, no matter what it is that you're doing, that kind of still, it feels as though you're still delivering a luxury service, no matter what it is they're asking of you? Yeah, I mean, I think that is really always my goal is, you know, whether your budget is 40000 or 4000 I want you to walk away with a Forbes Functions experience, which to us is, you know, a really about having us walk you through from ideation to execution, really being able to have, you know, the aesthetic you had in mind, the vision in your head become a reality. And for us, I think, as you've been saying, what really sets us apart is, having a large vendor network, having a lot of our team have backgrounds in fabrication and design and theater, we are really able to get creative and get scrappy with budgets so we can really make, you know, these events on different ends of the spectrum, both magical and feel like these really cohesive, immersive experiences. Um, and I think that's definitely, you know, a priority for me as I continue to grow is, I really first started my business trying to target, you know, people like me in that kind of 20 to 30 age group. And, you know, most of those people don't have the $100,000 corporate event budget. Um, so I think it really is about getting creative, getting scrappy, you know, getting your hands dirty. And I think, you know, as you've kind of alluded to, having a young female team really allows us to do that. Mm hmm. And I wonder, I mean, I am i have no idea how old you are, but I'm 38 and I can tell like from experience working with 
you're in essence going to grow up alongside your customers and your client base. And that budget that started out at 4K with a jewelry brand launch or something could turn into that 100K budget 10 years from now when they're like, oh, we've like graduated to diamondry and like we totally need you to help us with this brand new launch we're doing. Like it's really beautiful that you are in a space both with your team and what you're able to put out work-wise to work with those youthful brands that are still in their in their infancy and kind of grow up alongside them to keep just upping the level of what they're ready to do and your capacity is just going to continue to increase I think in a way that's just really authentic and it does seem that you and the brands that you've worked with really do have kind of like a symbiosis of at least just being able to grow in the direction of what it is that you're kind of both looking to do together. It's really cool. Yeah. And I think that is, you know, such an astute observation for both our brand clients. Um, you know, as you're saying, I definitely have seen, you know, brands that we work with on smaller events. Um, one client that we worked with in January was big by Melissa on their book launch. And, you know, we were able to work with them because we had had the last two years of having big by Melissa, having their cupcakes at all of our events, working side by side with their team at a lot of other brand events and, you know, building up that trust and that respect. So when they had a time to, you know, plan a really big book launch and have this kind of watershed moment for the brand, they wanted to turn to us because of that trust and respect that we had built up. And I think on this kind of same, same side with our private social clients, you know, we're really capturing people at this age where they're about to be having such large milestones, you know, Capturing a client when they're turning 25 or turning 30, you know, they're about to get engaged, get married, have their first child. All of these events and milestones, you know, really lend itself well to our business. And so I feel really fortunate that we're building up a roster of not only brand, but also social clients that we can really work with for the next, you know, 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. it, it is, it's a really beautiful way to not only bolster your business, but have those testimonials just from like every different angle, just flowing in constantly, which is any business's dream. So it's, it was one of the things that I noticed about your business too, that just had me like, I was like, Oh my God, I have to interview this woman. Like you are so ahead of your like age and like what you should be capable of doing at this moment. Like you've blown it out of the water. And I think it's, you know, like we have the Mindy Weisses of the event planning world. I've had, two other event planners on the show. I just love how large of a market it is. There's literally zero ability for it to be oversaturated because there's such, there's so many ways to niche down that gives you just like your absolute core of, of who your customer is. And I've covered, you know, two totally different types of event planning. And I think even though you do all different types of event planning. The fact that you are in New York and the Hamptons, in my opinion, makes you a lot different from the Philadelphia event planners that I have. It's like you guys have two very different worlds. And I love so much that in New York, which feels oversaturated with brands and trends and changes, you still find a way to manage to kind of just slice right through that, like, like a hot knife through butter. You literally are just kind of carving your path and making people kind of look over and be like, wait a minute, what? I love so much that in this city that basically burst the step in the repeat and like PR parties, you've managed to make the dinner party be the new PR experience, which I love so much. And this is something that was very popular when I first started PR 15 years ago. This was my favorite way to entertain. It was my favorite way to network for my clients it was the most valuable and it just left a mark in their hearts that lasted way beyond the night. And I love so much that you're bringing this back. This is kind of where I feel the glamour and like the old interactions of putting the relationships first, having the experience be second. And I think that's something very unique for the way that you plan because it's not always the thought process, especially in a fast paced environment like New York City. So when you are planning these it, they feel like installations to me. What are you thinking of brand wise when you are putting together these dinner party environments where the brand has, you know, a specific angle of wanting to entertain these guests or get a launch out there? Like what, what are the first steps that you take into consideration when you start the planning process? 
Yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, our, our kind of first steps and considerations, number one is always thinking about, you know, what is the strategy for this event? So what is the brand trying to get out of this? Um, and as you said, there's so many, I think, different value props that can come out of an event. Um, and I think, you know, having an understanding, does the, does the client want this to lead to more sales? Are they just trying to get general brand awareness in the city? Are they simply trying to get this product in front of influencers and get some content? Is this, you know, essentially kind of a photo shoot for the brand? Um, I think having an understanding of that allows us to decide what our install, what that fabrication may look like. And then from there, we're really able to decide, okay, you know, what is that core value proposition? How can we really push that forward? So I think a great example is, you know, last summer we did an event with Hampton Water at Surf Lodge in Montauk. And, you know, really thinking through, okay, if Hampton Water is renting out Surf Lodge for the weekend, how can we have everything from, you know, the towels that influencers are using to dry themselves when they get out of the pool to the flowers on the table really tell the story of rosé, life in the Hamptons, summertime, carefree energy, and, you know, really have that through line throughout the event. Um so I think for us, it's really about, you know, what is the messaging? What is the strategy? And then how can we push that to the forefront? Um, mm -hmm. Other examples are, you know, brands will come to us and they'll say, you know, maybe it's a skincare brand and they have this new hero ingredient. And it's like, okay, well, how are we going to include papaya in the menu, on the tablescape, in the decor and design? And for us, it's really about making sure, you know, it's we're not just putting a papaya on the table, doing a papaya on the menu. We really want it to be you know, every single detail is thought out and everything has a really cohesive and connective through line. Um, mm -hmm. So that's really important to us. And I think, you know, talking about your previous experience in PR, my previous experience also in PR, and I think I was so lucky early on in my career to have mentors. I mean, one of my first jobs was at um, a PR company called The Force and Stevens. And my boss, James LaForce, is kind of, you know, member of the old guard, PR in the 80s. And, you know, he always talked about, you know, customer experience, client experience, making it feel so, so personalized. We don't want this one size fits all experience. I think that's a lesson I've always kind of kept close to my heart. And we really try, I now try to strive to make sure that no two events look the same. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. And you took the words out of my mouth. You can absolutely tell that you're planning with a PR background because the product is always very delicately placed right in front of their face. And that's always the aim of a publicist. And I think you bring it to a visual representation. You make like it tactical in a way that I think does really immerse the guests in an experience, but also gives the brand something really palpable via content later that they are going to be able to run with. So it's kind of like you're like tripling down on their value for what they're getting out of the event, which I mean, I'll be honest, I can't wait to hire you for an event in New York so I can get together, <laughs> together all my podcast guests for dinner, but you very much, um, make people want to party. You make people want to do the cool things for their company and, I love so much that New York kind of cares and doesn't care like all at the same time. And I love that there's like always a balance between the two, which creates a really fun environment for things just feeling like a party when, you know, there was no pressure to begin with. And now it's like just popped off. What have been some of your favorite events that you've attended and not planned that kind of set your expectations higher and higher when you were first starting thinking about your company? Yeah, I mean, I would say when I was kind of first starting thinking about my company, what I would want Forbes Functions to look like, I attended a couple of different brand events. Um, and I think for me also, you know, I grew up in New York City. So I have been going to events planned by some of the larger event planners um, since I was little, like, you know, going to bat mitzvahs, children's birthday parties with big party planners. Um, and I think even as a teenager, I realized, okay, there are some planners where it feels like, you know, they're planning one bar bat mitzvah or one sweet 16, and then all of them kind of feel similar. It's like, the colors are changing or maybe the DJ is changing, but the feel and the experience really isn't changing that much. 
Um, and even with brand events, you know, I, my first few years living in the city after college, attending brand events with friends and just kind of feeling like, you know, as you kind of talked about with the step and repeat, like these events, it is like the same old, same old, you know, we check in at the front desk, we have a step and repeat moment, we have some sort of sponsored alcohol, you pick up a goodie bag and you're out the door. And it's like, you know, <laughs> for these influencers who are doing, you know, five, six, seven of those a night, how do you stand out, you know, in, in this really, you know, saturated environment of these brands in New York City? And, you know, my response is you really plan something unique and different. And I think a whole kind of additional part of that is, you know, back in the day when I think about when I was working in PR, which was almost 10 years ago now, it was very front facing, you know, it's like we have the product, we have the event, we have the glossy photos. And, you know, we see those to editors after the event. Nowadays with TikTok and Instagram, I always get requests from our followers. Hey, I want to see behind the scenes. Can you guys film some of the setup? Can you guys talk through mm -hmm. how you decided to go with this company or um, show us the floral install? And I think now people really want to see, you know, kind of underneath the hood of the car and how the sausage gets made. And that in itself is a whole other opportunity for content and marketing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do. You you personally have so many angles to get your business out there in a way that I find really um, just refreshing. It, it's people either want to play a part or they don't. And the people that do, they're constantly surfing for inspiration. They want things to work towards, to attain. And um, I'll say I lived in Philadelphia for 18 years. I know 45 event planners and they all had their thing. There was all like their thing that they got hired for to do, whether it was professional or private. And in the town that I live in now, I'm in Cape May. It's like the South version of like New York's Montauk. Like it's super small. There aren't too many people down here doing things. And, you know, you're getting an event planner from the city coming in. So a lot of people are resorting to trying to do their own really beautiful, cool things. Um, but it is, I mean, I won't lie. I've literally looked at your page so many times and just drawn inspiration from like trying to figure out what I want my events to look like in the future. So I can imagine the behind the scenes aspect would in itself probably just like take off virally because so many people are feeling in the mood to celebrate again. And I think that's a really cool space for us to be in right now, especially after like the last five years. Of yeah. Life. And I mean, honestly, when I started my business, which was June, 2022, I kind of felt like I had this really unique moment of, you know, we're exiting the pandemic. People really want to get together after a year and a half of having to stay six feet apart. And not only that, but I just noticed the general uptick on social media, on kind of all the TV and media I was consuming of people wanting to host, especially younger people. I think, you know, when I think about the 20, the 2000s, the 2010s, it wasn't like hot or sexy to stay in and have a dinner party. The cool hot thing was like, you know, go downtown, head to the club, listen to Flo Rida. Versus now it's like, I look at TikTok and it's like all the influencers, all the cool 20 somethings are having a dinner party at home or doing some sort of cool private supper club. And I think, you know, hosting and gathering and entertaining has just really come to the forefront of, I think especially American life in like a way it really hasn't in the last decade or so. And I think, you know, that gave me a really unique moment to try to kind of seize that energy. But also as someone who was born and raised in New York City and, you know, had a network naturally, you know, I grew up on the Upper East Side. I grew up going to the Hamptons. I knew the vendors, you know, that I liked just from my own kind of upbringing really allowed me to have a natural network that I could quickly turn into a business. Mm -hmm. And your aesthetic, I wonder, has it evolved over time or have you always had a flair for big, bold kind of presentation? Yeah, I feel like it definitely has developed a little bit in the last two years. I think, you know, a lot, as you said, uh, one of the most important things I think as an event planner is about finding your niche and finding what you really are passionate about. And, you know, I have friends who only do weddings or they only do brand events or they only do bar and bat mitzvahs or only do children's birthday parties. And I think for me, I didn't want to constrict myself to one type of event, but it's more kind of the type of client and the type of look. And I'm somewhere in where I, in my perspective, you know, if we're going to be hosting an event, 
we might as well go all out. We might as well try to do, you know, the greatest impact, the most dramatic look. And I think that's kind of, you know, become my niche, my personality on the market. Um, and, you know, now clients come to us saying, I love the Forbes Functions look. I've seen you in this. I've seen you in that. And that is just such a great feeling to know that we've kind of successfully created this niche and been able to make a name for ourselves in that way. Yeah, it's very special. It really is. Do you have, I guess, a favorite celebrity event that you've seen over the last year, we'll say, that has kind of caused you to want to try and offer something new or present something a little differently. I love your celebrity event breakdown reels. I think they're great. Um, is there one that sticks out to you that you were like obsessed with and you're like, I want to take this piece, that piece, this piece. I mean, I feel like there are honestly so many, I think some of the events that I'm most inspired by, honestly, are people that, you know, you talking about finding me online. So many people I will come across on my Explore page and be like, I absolutely love this or a friend of a friend will get married and I'll love it. I think in the last year or so, one brand in particular um, is Say Beauty, which they've done like an incredible job at really building up their events team. They have an amazing um, woman in LA who kind of does a lot of their planning. And I think for me, you know, we're talking about kind of our look and our personality, which is definitely kind of all out, colorful, bold. They very much take kind of a more minimalist, paired back approach. And I think that is something that, you know, inspires me a little bit. Um, I always want to challenge myself and go outside my comfort zone. So thinking about, you know, what would it look like to do events with a little bit more of that aesthetic is something that I find, you know, exciting and fun. Yeah, it's, it's definitely exciting. I mean, with my PR background, I had to plan plenty of events. Enjoy that very much so. But there comes a moment where you really have to lean all in and it's not so much about what the client wants, but you realize like, okay, I'm, I'm leaning more, more towards the event side of PR than the strategy. I loved the strategy, the business side of things, the operations, but there was always kind of a moment. I'll say it was around 2015 where things were getting very stale and they were getting very boring. And, you know, there was a transition where we were a nightclub city first and foremost in Philadelphia. So my PR started in just club events, party planning for clubs, the whole nine started to dissipate and dwindle around 2010, like after the fall of 2008 financially and switched into a restaurant environment, which led to dinner parties, private media events, uh, pop-ups, brand installations with snacks. Like there was such a diverse change that went from experience, full-blown party to demonstration to informational. I find when I look at your work, that your informational is really just speckled in amongst the party in a way that you can see very fine details that are being planted to kind of take them on a journey. How much effort goes into doing that? Because I see how effortlessly you're doing it. And I just want everyone to know that like, there's a lot that goes into this level of party planning, especially if you're asking for it to be done for your business. Yeah, no, I think definitely. And as you said, you know, it's always our goal with a brand client. We don't want someone to get hit over the head with that messaging. As you kind of saying, we really want it to be in the details. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, kind of going back to an event we did in January with Big by Melissa, you know, we didn't have a giant sign that said, welcome to the Big by Melissa new cookbook launch. Instead, it was like, okay, how are we going to prop up the cookbooks and have those displayed amongst the food? All of the food, we're going to be using the recipes from the cookbook so that guests can actually try and see what these recipes taste like. And then thinking about, okay, if we want to do some sort of, you know, favor or some sort of, you know, gifts that we're giving guests, let's not do, you know, the classic goodie bag. Let's do a shoppable, almost, we basically ended up building a grocery store where guests are just welcome to pick things off the shelves and pick and choose from Melissa's favorite products. Because isn't that so much more of an engaging and exciting experience? And wouldn't you want to turn to your friend the next morning and say, oh my gosh, I got a Le Creuset dish and I got this amazing salt and I got the Grazza olive oil and I'm so excited. 
as opposed mm-hmm. to just, you know, going to a front desk, picking up your goodie bag, okay, I'm in and out. Um, mm-hmm. So I think it's really about, you know, really about bringing in those details and thinking everything out, which, as you're kind of saying, is super time intensive. And, you know, coming up with these creative concepts are definitely, you know, um, not easy and not um, not something that's done overnight. Um, even right now, we have another client, um, which we just signed on for November, and we're doing a really exciting pop-up for them. And with that, I think you will absolutely love it. Um, the kind of idea behind it is, again, doing something really different, but still speaking to this brand's identity. Um, And I think, you know, that is how you make a splash in today's world where you are super oversaturated with brands in the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very, um, I think that some understand the level of just sheer, like, grunt work that goes into ensuring that you're providing a completely unique event. And I think a lot of people attempt to do their own kind of events and then they realize like, holy crap, just getting everything together for a tablescape is literally taking me 33 hours. Like what the hell? I want to pivot to hours at yours. You are giving people the ability to have your level of dinner party in their own home or space. So let's talk about where this idea came from and then break down how exactly it works. Yeah, so I mean, honestly, the idea really came, I, before I even started my event planning business, I had always had this idea for some sort of tablescape in a box, some easy curated tablescape, because I had also had friends who said, you know, I love your dinner parties, I love attending this, but I personally don't own, you know, 12 pattern plates, I don't really have all this inventory. And after two years of events and running my business, I and I honestly wish I could turn my tam- camera right now because I'm in my office, I could show you. I have so much inventory. Just, I've, you know, kept things over the last few years, things that we've bought for clients' events, haven't used. And I kind of realized around December, January, you know, I'm sitting on this gold mine of stunning plates, beautiful cutlery, amazing linens, vases, all the rest that just burning a hole in my pocket, kind of sitting on the shelves in my office. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to kind of think of ways that we could use that and also ways that we could kind of capture another customer. Um, You know, we do luxury high-end events and not everyone, you know, is necessarily meeting our minimums for dinner parties or birthdays. So thinking about how we could offer, you know, the Forbes Functions experience and this beautiful dinner party and tablescape at a lower price point. And then as I thought about it more, I realized, you know, people in New York City, we don't have a lot of storage. We all have apartments that are the size of shoeboxes. So I was thinking, you know, this would be great if it was something like a rental, like a rent the runway or like a pickle, which is a service in New York a friend of mine started, where, you know, you have a courier who delivers it to your apartment. You can use it for that weekend or that night. And then, you know, you just put it back in your lobby, you hand it off the next day and you're done. And so I was able to find a great courier partner and now we're offering local tablescape rental and delivery in New York City, all at $250, includes everything you need for a dinner party minus the food and beverage. Um, So I am super excited about this concept just because it really is allowing clients, even at a lower price point, to achieve these stunning tablescapes. And our goal is, you know, every three months or so, we hope to be coming out with capsule collections really be capturing the trends, you know, capturing whatever is happening that people are really into and be able to have these tablescapes that are curated for you, that are delivered to your door, that, you know, you can set up without having to worry about the storage, the hassle, the cost. And it's also just more sustainable because you don't have to buy all these things and then use them one time. Mm-hmm. You couldn't even go to Target and purchase everything you need for under 250 for an event like that. And it wouldn't be near the quality of what you're providing. So already out the gate. It's already a no brainer. It doesn't require an Uber trip to like some far off portion of New York to get what you need for this. Exactly. It's so smart. And I love that you're going to create capsule collections. I see that just expanding in 27,000 different directions. So that's super cool. Um, Have you considered creating like you have such a beautiful brand that I think would allow you to really just like expand in a way that you could have product lines, you could have event like 
products that are helping others to do this for themselves. Has that ever been like an idea that's crossed your mind? Because if not, I hope you start thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think I think for me, I I'm someone where I get so excited about all the different ideas. I have a running document of, you know, all the different ideas I have for Forbes functions. And, you know, my end goal when I started my business is I, I never wanted to be just an event planning company. Obviously, I, I am an event planner. I love event planning. But to me, event planning, you know, it touches so many different industries, whether it's PR, like we've been talking about, whether it's home decor, design. Um, and to me, it's it's really about kind of creating the foundation now with our event planning and with ours at yours to hopefully be able to, you know, grow into some sort of lifestyle brand in the next five, 10 years where, you know, maybe we do have a coffee table book. Maybe we do have, you know, other products, whether it's our own line of home decor or linens that, you know, can use to bring the Forbes functions experience into people's homes. So that's definitely something I am looking forward to. Um, but I think, you know, I am very much someone who also thinks, you know, it's a thousand hours you got to be putting in the work and I, you know, I love our events business and I really want this to always be kind of the core of my business. Yeah. I love that. And it keeps it authentic to you and you're so creative. It really does just feel like the natural progression for sure. What is like your dream event that you haven't been able to plan yet, but like if you could snap your fingers tomorrow, you'd start working on it. I would say I have two and both oh. are just brands I love. Um, oh, okay. One of them is I love Love Shack Fancy. I've always been a fan of that brand. And I think, you know, they have a similar aesthetic to our brand where they're very over the top, kind of playful, maximalist, eccentric. And I love, you know, that style of design and that aesthetic. Um, and, you know, also female founded. The founder, um, Rebecca, actually grew up in New York City. Um, so kind of similar background to me, which I find, you know, inspiring and I really like. And then another similar company I would say is Hill House, again, a woman founded brand um, by now based in New York City that, again, I feel like just has a really strong brand identity, whether it's, you know, everything from their wallpaper to the pillows to the dresses, just mm -hmm. they also have this attention to detail that I find, you know, so admirable. So those are two brands that I would love to work with just because I think when you have such a strong brand identity and you have a really great grasp on what your customers want, you are really able to have an amazing event. So I could see so many different ways, whether it's a dinner party, pop up, a whole weekend experience that both those brands, you know, we could work with. Um, so those are definitely two dream clients of mine. I love that. We're putting it out there. We're manifesting. It no, right seriously. Right also, exactly. Sarah, do you mind if I go blow my nose real quick? I'm so oh sorry. God, please. No, do not be sorry. I'll write down the time. 30 okay, I'll be right back. I apologize. No, no worries. No worries, girl. I'm stopped. Okay, apologies. No, no worries at all. I, I feel bad for you. I understand my husband's allergies are horrendous, so I get it. He's just leaking all day. <laughs> no, literally. I was... Toilet paper. Like, that's all you can do. You're just like, uh... I was someone growing up... Um... I, I went to an all-girls school on um, 92nd in Madison, and it was one large building. We had a roof that had, like, a playground and jungle gym up top. And mm -hmm. from grades, like, kindergarten through fifth grade, I wasn't allowed to go to the roof and the playground during allergy season. So the whole month of April, I had quiet reading time for, like, five years. And oh now, thankfully, get allergy shots and, like, have all my medication, but still, I'm, like, dying. Um, so apologies also if I sound not the best. No, you sound perfect, but I can't even imagine. Like, you're a trooper. You're a trooper for real. <laughs> my poor parents were, like, you as a little five-year-old just being in tears because you couldn't go on the playground. <laughs> They're, like, it's okay. You don't understand. One day you will. Yeah, no, exactly. Oh, my God. Okay. We will five, four... Three, two, one, boom, we're in. So Cameron, I would love you to give just like two or three little tidbits of how someone planning a special event at home can make it more personalized and feel a little bit more intimate in a way that kind of elevates the time, their experience. Yeah, I would say my number one tip, as you said, is really personalize it. So to me, that is about the first thing you should be doing is 
selecting either a theme or an aesthetic, come up with, you know, what is the vision. So whether you want to do a garden party theme or you want to have kind of a monochromatic, more neutral moment, I think, you know, coming into whatever event you're planning with a clear vision, even, you know, going on Pinterest, picking a few photos, getting a mood board together is all super helpful in just creating a really cohesive event. I would say kind of next step is thinking about, you know, printed materials. These days we have so many resources online that are so easy and inexpensive, whether it's Etsy, Canva, other tools, where you really can create adorable, you know, personalized signage, cocktail napkins, menus, place cards. And I always find that, you know, those smaller event elements really add up to make a larger impact um, and really make the event feel that much more custom. And I would also say, you know, don't forget about the details. So Mm -hmm. even smaller event elements on, you know, your tabletop. So things like napkin rings, um, small votives, taper candles, um, bud vases. I think, you know, people really think that a tablescape is just, okay, we have the tablecloth, we have the plates, done. And there's really so many other decorative elements you can add in. And I find, you know, the more attention to detail and, you know, the more kind of um, granular you get with your tablescape, it's just going to be so beautiful. You're going to have that kind of dramatic effect. And all of these things, whether it's, you know, bud vases, pick up some flowers at Trader Joe's for 10 or $15, super inexpensive and easy with, you know, place cards, menus, things like that. Canva, free, easy, you can print them at FedEx or Staples. Um, Mm -hmm. And then, you know, nowadays with websites like Amazon and also, you know, thinking about places like Goodwill, other local thrift stores, secondhand stores, Facebook Marketplace are all just really amazing resources for getting, you know, great tabletop, great event products at a super low cost. Such good tips. And honestly, I think people really overlook the secondhand stores because you can get such unique, weird, cool stuff for super cheap. No, it's so true. And I think, you know, some, so many of the things that I, I love the most for my like personal collection of things I use to host are things I found secondhand, like, you know, really cool silver candelabras or old silver napkin rings. Um, And, you know, you can't buy those on Amazon. Um, and it's also probably better for the environment if you didn't. So I always push, you know, secondhand Facebook marketplace sites like that. And then again, it's like, see what you have on hand at home and figure out ways that, you know, you can mix and match and shake that up. I love that. Yeah. Repurpose things, make it a little easier for yourself. Not everything has to be brand new if you're doing a party. No, it's so true. You can like get right out of the gates. Like you don't have to buy everything brand new. You can mix and match a lot of stuff, which I think makes a really nice impact. Yeah, and uh, and a lot of the trends today, I feel like, are super honestly budget friendly. Like, you know, doing smaller flower arrangements, bud vases are super budget friendly. This whole like bow trend right now, you know, ribbon is so inexpensive, and you know, even just adding that around cutlery, adding it around the stem of glasses, adds such a cute effect at such a low cost. Mm-hmm. It, it is really, it's like the teeniest details can really elevate something so quickly. It's so yeah. Fun. And I think that's your, that's your magic. I think that's why I, and I wanted to have you on because I really love the way that you go about doing what you do. And this is just literally the beginning. I can't wait to see what's next for you. It's just so enjoyable to watch. Well, thank you so much. It, it is so wonderful to talk to someone, especially someone with a background in the PR industry you know, has seen kind of the metamorphosis in events over the last decade or so. And I think, you know, in 2024, we're really in such an exciting moment for live events, virtual events, you know, questioning and interrogating, you know, what can a brand event, what can a private social event be? And I think for me, it's just been so exciting to kind of push the envelope and test the limits of event planning in the city, Long Island and the Hamptons. Yeah. It's you're killing it. You're absolutely killing it. And I'll be stalking all along watching all the way. I'm so excited for you and just everything that's to come. Um, my final question for all of my guests is this Cameron, how do you make your life rich? I think for me, my life, I try to make my life rich by the people around me. I think 
I feel so fortunate having grown up in New York, attended college down south at Duke, come back to the city to have so many different and distinct communities. You know, I have my incredible friends that I grew up with in New York from high school. And then, you know, people I've met in the last few years living in the city. I feel like I have, you know, my friends in one area and, you know, finance consulting. I have my creative downtown friends. I have my friends in theater and comedy. Um, I have friends I've met from the event planning industry um, and, you know, mentors kind of on that scene. And for me, I think making my life rich is really about being exposed to all these different perspectives, personalities, and just being able to have kind of those different groups continuously empower and uplift me has made my life rich and has made my business rich. Oh, I love that. It's so beautifully said. Thank you so much, Cameron. This was such a pleasure. And uh, I look forward to us working together in the future. And guys, if you are interested in learning, well, you need to just go follow the Instagram first and foremost. It's so beautiful. Second, you need to just go figure out when you're going to be renting uh, hours at yours because everyone needs a beautiful picnic moment or birthday party at their house this spring or summer. And then finally, just go check out the website. Your website is beautiful. Um, a lot of testimonials over there. You can get to see a lot of work, both professionally and privately, that Cameron has done with her company. I just wish you nothing but the best, and uh, we'll definitely be talking again soon. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you Cameron. so much.